Hi, hi, hi. Good morning. This is Jordan Relationships Right. I'm Jennifer Hurwitz and it's recording. Fabulous. I'm so this is so exciting for me. And I say this every week. And I repeat myself every week. I'm like, I'm bringing you the best guest ever from blah, blah, blah. I'm in Israel right now. This is just like, I'm, my, I'm, I'm felling. I can't take it anymore. My, my Jewish is coming out all over the place and I don't even care. I'm so happy. Dr. Peter Lin is here today and I've waited a very long time for this. And I'm We've glad been talking we, about this for a long time. A long time, but I'm glad we waited we- because it was doing divorce right. And now it's doing relationships right with, I, I think you fit perfectly in the doing Great. relationships right. Okay, fantastic. Hi, Dr. Lin. Simon is... It is a privilege to be here, okay? You're doing amazing work, and it's really awesome to see your following and all of your ideas. And, you know, for, I just want to say before you even begin that obviously you've been through a lot as far as divorce is concerned, but for someone to turn that into a lot of positive, not just for themselves, but for others, is really an amazing thing. And you could have gone the exact opposite way and, you know, been really frustrated by it and kept it all in, but to turn it into the world of good that you have done it's just really awesome to see a real role model. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. I'm so glad you're here. So you wrote a book that I love. And first of all, it's called Not Not a Partnership. Is that right? Yeah, Not a Partnership. Not a Partnership. <laughs> and it talks about, this is like the book I needed. Before I got married, during my marriage, maybe I wouldn't have gotten divorced. We were talking about this before. It's called Not a Partnership. And it is just like, it's it's the book that every married couple needs but I think you need to talk about this stuff before you get married. And I love that you're here because this is like the, the perfect book for doing relationships, right? It could not be more perfect. I feel like I should have it on my website as well, next to my <laughs> two books. And I feel listeners, everyone listen to me carefully. If you're looking, if you're listening, if you're watching, get out a pen and take notes. This is like the end all be all for me. Are you on Clubhouse, Dr. Lynn? No, I'm not. Let's get you on Clubhouse. We're going to do a room together because I'm obsessed right. with Clubhouse. This is fabulous. fantastic. Fantastic. So, where do we start? How did this book come about? Tell me a little bit. I'm going to stop talking. My, my listeners don't care about me. They care about you. Let's talk. Right. How, how did this So start? let me tell you where this, where this book came from, okay? Um, I am involved with tons of students, young professionals, young couples, you name it, okay? And what I found was something which was so fascinating is that you ask people what's the most important thing for you in life. Everyone's going to say, I'm going to build that marriage my family, which the marriage is at the center of the family. And they all say that. And then I started speaking to them and I started asking them, okay, so if that's your number one priority, that's it. Well, let's look at your professional life. In order to succeed in your professional life, you go to high school, college, a master's degree, this seminar, that internship, and that's just before you get the job. Once you get the job, then you're, you know, going to this boot camp and you're trying to move up the ladder and you're maybe going and getting a doctor, who knows what. So when it comes to our professional lives, you do all this stuff to prepare for it. And then once you're in it, you do a lot to kind of stay on top of your game and advance yourself. So I was speaking to all of these people and I said, well, how much are you doing to either get ready for your marriage, which is the most important thing in your life? And once you're in it, what are you doing actually to really succeed at it? And I found that people, they held this idea to be true that the most important thing was marriage, but either before or doing, they weren't doing much as far as preparing for that. Right. And, you know, that just it, it blew my mind. I never had a desire to write a book on marriage. It was never a goal of mine, anything. But when I saw, it wasn't like I was like trying to figure out which topic should I write about. Right. It was never a vision. It was like never a desire of mine. But when I saw like this, this like blaring problem that all these people were either so prepared beforehand or once they got in it, they were just totally unprepared as far as how to deal with things. I said, whoa, we've got a problem here. And therefore I started spending a lot of time, my co-author teaching about it. And that all went in a very smooth way into book form, which is our book, Not a Partnership. Well, so that's really kind of the Yeah, it's amazing. Birth. But it's interesting to me that we take parenting classes and we take breastfeeding classes and we take how to do birth the baby and we take, but then it's like, you look at your partner and like, okay, we have this kid here if you're having kids, right? And we know how, right. to, you know, everyone teaches how to parent that kid and how to like put the kids first, which is my big thing also, but no one teaches you how to nurture the relationship with your spouse, which right. really is the most important. Everything, you know, we're, we're experts. I can tell you everything about my keto diet as far as exactly what to do and how to go. But it comes to the most important part of my life, my life mission, 
because I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm not really working just for work. I'm working to build this family. And what do I'm really, what am I really doing to prepare myself for that? Or once I'm in it to be great at it. Right. And I just saw it was such a sad reality. And it was so disappointing that I said, this, this, this is just crazy. It's just, it doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be that way. And you know what? I was talking with you before. I feel like this is the truth. If I would have had someone like you prior to my marriage, I would still be married. And that's, you know, unfortunately I wrote my second book based on, you know, my divorce having to, I, I learned about marriage through my divorce, but I could have been married and not ever like what it could have should or that's my book. Right. It's just right. unfortunate that I feel like your work can save so many people from divorce. And I feel like mine can do you no know, same thing, but I wish I didn't have to go through divorce to, to find it. Right. And I, and I don't think people do. And a lot of times people run to second relationships with the hopes that things are going to be different. Right. And you know, very well, things aren't so different. And it's a big problem. And, and that's why, you know, people ask me, am I a therapist? The answer is no, I don't want to be a therapist. I find myself that I'm deep in the world of marriage education oh. because there's so much that can be just learned even before the world of therapy. I'm, I'm a huge fan of therapy, but just the world of basic education, this idea of marriage is not something you have to go into blind and it's not something you have to stumble through once you're in it. There's so many tools out there as far as how to actually give yourself you know, to give yourself the tools to be able to thrive in it, it's, it's, it's a real shame if people don't have those. Okay. So can you, my, my listeners are for sure are like, get to the tools, get to the tools. Can you give <laughs> us a few really like, get your pencils, everyone. Cause you know, that's what they're doing right now. They're like, just get to the tools. <laughs> I mean, everyone's, you know, of course, communication, people are like, it's, you have to learn to communicate in my love languages and blah, blah. That's all fine and good, but get to what, what are some real nuggets of goodness that you can give us today? If you, so let me give you, um, I'll tell you like this. Um, let me give you, I'll tell you like this. We, we split the book up into two parts, right. okay? The first part is really the paradigms, meaning if you don't have the paradigm clear as far as what you're getting yourself into, then it's a real problem. You know, we call the book not a partnership. Everyone always says, hey, what do you mean? It's the ultimate partnership, okay? The answer is, is that if you look at actually most business partnerships, we did a lot of research on this, they fail. Oh. And... And so we call the book not a partnership because if people are looking at it as a regular partnership, it's not going to work out. Okay. But let me tell you like this. We give certain paradigms that if you, if you don't have your head screwed on straight and you're not clear as far as exactly what you're getting yourself into, that's a difficult place. So there's three kind of paradigms we go through. Okay. Number one is like this. We defined what is marriage. Okay. Very nice idea. What is marriage besides for a civil ceremony? So marriage is defined like this. Marriage is defined that I look at my spouse, that my life mission is to do everything I can to give my spouse the life that he or she deserves and wants. I am investing all of my efforts in their well-being in order so they can live an existence which is truly awesome. And what's happening? My spouse is doing the same towards me. I don't feel that way about my boss. Right. I don't feel that way about my weekend, you know, softball league, you know, right. teammates. It's a different story. And therefore, that's what a marriage is. It's not just two people coming together and therefore, hey, you know, let's see if this works or not. It's a commitment through thick and thin that my mission is to give to the other everything they yearn and desire in order so they can have the life that they want. And my spouse is doing that same towards me. Okay. I have a question for you. Yeah. So if you know, like prior to that, that, that that's not, that that's not your jam. Should you not get married? If a person doesn't have this outlook, when you get married, you're going to have to tell me lots of reasons why and how this marriage is going to work. Okay. Now, it may be a great weekend fling. It might be a nice relationship on the side. It might be, I'm not saying it won't be that. But if you want a marriage through thick and thin, to build a family together, to go with each other through hard times, so it's not going to survive that. So in other words, if you're looking for a father and not a partner or a husband, this is what we're talking about. 
You got it. Because that's okay? me. <laughs> so like I know okay, a, lot so of, a lot of women, you know, that like my age, I'm 48. A lot of us grew up in, you know, Jewish cultural, whatever families were like, you know, we got the MRS degree. We went to college for four years. We looked for the perfect husband. I called it the perfect sperm. He was everything. He was, he, I looked at this man and I said, he is going to be the best father ever. And I right. knew it, but I wasn't typically, I knew I wanted babies. And right. I, for me, I want, I knew that my kids were going to come first. And that was in everyone. Cause that's how I was raised to put my kids first. Right. So right. I think I went into this marriage fully thinking I wanted a father for my, you know what I'm saying? I was, you're absolutely, I am like mind blown. It is exactly right what you're saying because right. I never had the mentality that we were going to, what you just said. I knew. Right. And that's why I tell 100%. you. 100%. Now, you're 100%. I'm, not here to, I'm not here to tell people to have to get married, but if you already get married, if you wanted to work, then it's got to be this way. And I don't think there's anyone who gets married with the hope that it's not going to work. Right. You're exactly right. I never thought Everyone who spends money in that marriage and, you, and, and you're sitting there in your wedding gown or your right. tuxedo, in your mind, this is forever. I thought it was forever. I really did. I thought we were doing, I did. I thought, I never thought it wasn't, but now I know why. That's exactly, you're 100% right. right. 100%. So, so the, the second paradigm we deal with, just to make sure that you're thinking right, is that great marriages don't happen. They're built. And what happens to a lot of people is like, you know, you get married and you're expecting that if I find Mr. Perfect, it's going to be bliss. It's going to be <laughs> epic and amazing. And, and what happens? And what happens? All of a sudden, you get to that first kind of bump in the road. You're like, well, guess it's the wrong person. Okay. Big problem. And like everything in life, whether you're doing anything, okay, whether you're trying to build a social media channel, a building, a, you know, a business anything things take work and things take energy and things take effort and what we have to realize is that great marriages don't just happen because mr right and mrs right get married they happen because two people are committed to working hard to make this relationship amazing and when people have that mindset that i'm going to build a great marriage not that a great marriage is going to happen so really what should happen is that five years into your marriage your marriage is doing much better than it was when it started and 10 15 years it's always going up because you're working at it and you're putting effort into it and therefore it's getting stronger and it's coming closer together i love this where were you okay. i needed you <laughs> this, is like my, this is perfection okay i can't even take it my listeners are quite this is right this is it okay, now i understand okay that's the second one and the third, and the, one, is a more the third one is that like this, is that there's always a question of, do you love someone and then you give to them? Or do you give to someone and then you love someone? And the reality is like this, is that love is something which is built, which is created. And the way you make love happen in your marriage, the way you build love is when you give to the person that is what creates the love and connection between each other. And if you want the PDF manual as far as how to make a marriage great, how to allow things to flourish, it's one word and one word only, and that's the idea of giving. And the more you give, and that's coming two ways, it's not just a one-way street, the more you give, what you're going to see is all of a sudden all of the intimacy, all of the connection, all those things they come together in the most awesome way. The Sober League system is designed to make parenting time safer with real-time remote alcohol monitoring. Soberlink uniquely combines a breathalyzer with wireless connectivity and is the only system that includes facial recognition, tamper detection, and advanced reporting. Parents can submit a test anytime, anywhere, thanks to Soberlink's wireless technology, which delivers test results by text message or email to the concerned parties. Simplify co-parenting arrangements by using the system that provides transparency and proof of sobriety throughout the day. Flexible schedules combined with real-time delivery of results make Soberlink the experts in remote alcohol monitoring technology. It's my pleasure to offer my listeners $50 off your device. Just email info at soberlink.com and mention doing divorce right, but hurry, it's for a limited time only. Soberlink.com. 
You're like making me cry. I can't even take it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like I cry very rarely on the show, but when I do, my people know I'm like, I'm in tears. Like it literally makes, it just makes me, I just cannot yeah. even, like, it's just so true because it just, it wasn't like listening to you talk. I'm like, oh my God, now I get it. I totally get it. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like, I totally get it. It makes, it makes, and even thinking about my relationship now, I've been in a relationship for four years. Right. And I'm saying I'm never getting married again, right? Because I just, I'm like, why would I ever do that to myself? <laughs> but now thinking about it, I think I could probably, I know what I'm doing wrong. Like, I right. could fix it just listening to you. I'd like want to call Jim and be like, I know now. <laughs> it's true. That, that makes sense. It does. It this, just, what I'm saying is, well, it takes the pressure off of you because it doesn't have to be perfect right now. Right. As long as you know how to actually build it and make it amazing, a different story. Right. And that's the whole thing. Like, you know, everyone, I was just taught like you, you know, your kids come first, your kids come first, your kids. And I, I tell my clients now, I'm like, y'all, if you don't nurture your relationship and put your spouse first, those kids are not, you're going to end up putting them second by getting, you're going to have been divorced. Like, you know, like right. you have to nurture a relationship. It just, it's just something that's so, you know, it's just, that's what we've, I grew up. Listen, right. you know, my mom, right. that's how why I modeled. Yeah, I also listen. I also grew up in, in in that and saw that a lot. And I'm interesting. I've been speaking now recently a lot with you know the idea of parenting during this whole pandemic and how to. And the advice I've been giving nonstop is that the greatest thing you can do for your children who are probably, you know, maybe a bit anxious right now or having a hard time or frustrated, is when the marriage is strong. The overflow of what happens and what it gives the kids is so much security. It's so much warmth. It's so much, you know, it just, it's, it's an awesome environment of what it creates. And people are spending a lot of time focusing on the children, which I'm all for, but you have to realize the impact of what happens when you make your marriage great. Not only does it, you know, create something amazing in your marriage, but the overflow to your children is just such an awesome thing to see. Right. I, I say that all the time and people don't believe me until they actually do it. They're like, oh yeah, Jen, you were right. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I hate to say that. I told you so, right? <laughs> It just seems so, I guess what it, for me, I'm, I always think like in the moment, like it's, it's all, you know, it sounds so, you know, I get it, but in the moment when I'm trying to check myself, it's hard, right? Right. It's hard. It's hard sure. to, everyday life to get, you know, especially now with this pandemic, I'm like, it's tough. It, it's, it's really, it's, it, it's, it's definitely not easy and um, it definitely, you know, it takes work, but, but, but this is the work that has to be done for people to not just to make sure that, you know, all of us want to come out of this pandemic, different people. And, you know, I think anyone who's just yearning to get back to normal, I think hopefully it's going to be more than that and things can be different. And this is a time where it actually, you know, people can't really go too many places right now. If there's ever a time where you have the time to focus on your marriage and your marriage needs that attention, it's now more than ever. Right. I agree. So the first, so the first part of the book is the paradigms. Right. And then the second part. So then what we do in the second part is we do like this. We say, okay, so if I just told you the PDF manual is the world of giving. Okay. So, okay. That's a nice vague word. So what we do is we now say, okay, let's go super practical. Forget your theory. Forget the nice big ideas. Let's go hyper-focused, really practical. And what we do is we say, okay, we're going to give you four pillars of giving. Okay. And then we're going to do it. So what we do is really set up a situation where I'm going to give you four different ways of how to think about giving and practical examples to really make it come alive. And therefore, we have four pillars of giving. And the four pillars are, number one, keeping your relationship fresh. Oh, so hard. Okay. Doing everything you can to make it that, you know, that young spark you initially had continues. And there's a way to actually do that. Okay. Okay. Number two is the idea of gratitude, infusing gratitude into your relationship, which we're amazing at gratitude with strangers. Isn't that funny? But yeah, it's it's really it, it, it's it's a bit sad, but it's it very funny. I, funny and sad. Yes, and my my ex husband, my yeah. husband, I call him. He used to say to me, you know, Jen, you're so kind and you're so nice and you're so wonderful to everyone else. Everyone gets nice, Jen, in the entire world, and you come home and I get mean, Jen. Why is that? I'm like. Right. It's just so much easier to be nice to everyone else, Mark. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's you, okay? <laughs> it's also what, also what gets in the way as well as the world of expectations. Yeah. 
And expectations are a killer, okay? Because what happens? When do I express gratitude to my, let's say, to my wife? I have these high expectations. When she goes like way beyond the expectations, I'm like, oh, thank you, honey, amazing, okay? And when she goes one little ounce below my expectations, I'm a frustrated guy. That's my. Okay. Of course. But, but you go to Starbucks, you go to Starbucks and you're walking out of Starbucks with your $40 Frappuccino. And someone says to you, hey, Jen, you know, you left your credit card. You're like, oh, my gosh. Thank you know, you so much. And you, you take a selfie and you send a Christmas card and, you know, you tell everyone about it. And, like, the greatest hero in the world. Right. You have no idea. This guy could have just robbed at least five banks. And now he's getting a, a coffee at Starbucks. But to you, greatest person in the world. Best thing ever. He's my be- He's been your best friend. Right. Traded phone numbers. Right. Like, you know what? Greatest guy in the world, right? What is so, wrong with me? You're right, though. That's exactly that's me. <laughs> I come home, I'm like, why are the dishes put away? I mean, right? It's right. Yeah. I'm an awful person. Yeah. <laughs> so that makes two of us, okay? <laughs> um, number three is the world of respect. Oh. And, and the world of respect is just so huge. It's actually interesting. It is the topic which is spoken about the most when it comes to, you know, having a certain kind of marriage, a healthy marriage. But it's a topic that people have the least amount of practical advice for. And we try and really go into this idea as far as how a person can really show respect to their spouse in a pretty awesome way. Um, And the fourth kind of way of how you can give, and this may sound funny, and this is probably the one that we speak about the most, is by really taking responsibility for the things that you bring into the marriage. And when you ignore your spouse and you take responsibility for your own issues, you know, let's say, for example, let's say I have an anger issue, okay? So what am I going to see? That I probably get angry at work. I get angry, you know, in social you know, circles that I'm a part of. I get angry at my parents. And, of course, I'm going to get angry at home. Mm-hmm. That if I just decide, listen, you know what I'm going to do? Forget my wife. I'm going to take responsibility for my anger issue. And I'm going to go to therapy listen to some podcasts, read a couple of books, go to a seminar. What I'm going to see is that not only will so many of the other places in my life get better, okay, and of course my marriage, but what's going to end up happening is, you know, my wife's probably going to say, hey, what are the issues I bring to the table? It mirrors. And then you have this amazing cycle of, you know, people really working on themselves in order to benefit the marriage. And it's quite an awesome reality of what that can produce. So they're like mirroring each other's. Right. Yeah. It's amazing. it's amazing. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to, my, my boyfriend's going to be very upset about this, but I feel like I do a lot of work on myself, Dr. Lynn, a lot of work. And, you know, I say to him, you know, maybe you should do some, and he's like, I'm good. Right. Not, that's not the response you want. That is not the response I'm looking for, Dr. Layton. That is not. <laughs> that is Jim, not, are that, you listening? That is not the response I'm looking at. He's like, no, I'm, is, I'm good. I'm like, okay, you know what? Right. Okay, maybe you're really good, Jim, but I've been doing a lot of work on myself for the last right. year. <laughs> I always say, I always tell people, if you're not sure of what your real issues are you should work on, just ask your spouse. It's will have a very clear list. No problem. If I ask my wife what my issues are, she's going to tell me in five seconds. <laughs> Work on these five things and we're good to go. You're like, we got it. I mean, it's so funny. <laughs> and the thing is, it's like, I think to myself all the time, oh, just, and I do, I, I'm so, I didn't hold myself accountable during my marriage until I was literally separated. And I called my husband and I said, I am so sorry. I know what I did wrong. And it was like too late, right? So now I'm like all about accountability. Like I right. know I was emasculating last Tuesday at 5 p.m. on, you know, <laughs> on 24th of December, you know, like whatever, you know, like I know that I did this. And meanwhile, I'm like, what does that do? change your behavior, Jen? You know, you can admit it right. all day wrong, but all day long, right. I can say what I did wrong, but <sighs> it's tough. This is tough work. Wow. It's tough work, work. But, but, it's, but it's the important work. And it's, the, it's, and, it's the, and, and going back, this is the work that we really care about. Yeah. Because if you ask people, again, this is how my whole book started, is I was asking people, what's the most important thing to you? And I just got universal across the board. People were saying, this is it. Right. And we spend so much of our day caught in things that are not our top priorities. So can I ask you another question? Do you think, I think this is not only for married people. I think this book is for everybody. I think and if you're in a relationship, you need to read this book. I, I Listen, we, we try to make, in, our, in my mind, okay, People say, why do you need another marriage book? There's 10 trillion marriage books, okay? You're right. I got, I got tons of them on my shelf in my office and here. I'm all for them, and we promote a lot of those books. 
our book in my mind is, you know, when we went to college and take prerequisite classes. Yes. Okay. This book is, as far as we're concerned, this book is the prerequisite to relationships. I agree. This is the basic meat and potatoes. All the other books are, okay, now once you have the fundamentals clear, okay, let's specialize in this. Let's, you know, different things. So in our mind, this book is meat and potatoes, you know, number one, what is a marriage? And number two, what's the manual of how a marriage can actually flourish? But you can apply it to all relationships across Agree. the board, no problem. Agree. So I, I love to help people on my show. I feel like you should be in every, like, you know, the not. Do you know that website mm-hmm. for, like, in great engaged couples? I feel like, like, every. I, you, I don't know it. Okay. Okay. Like, you need, I feel like this needs to be for, like, every engaged couple needs to have this in, like, their, like, you know, wedding, pre-wedding, what is it called? Their, their bridal party it should be a gift. To them. Whatever it is. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Like we need to get smart. The bridal with shower, the bridal shower. Yes. yes. Right. It should be, everyone right. should be getting this for their, for like, so everyone listen to me carefully. I love to, you know, mm-hmm. if you have a wedding gift to get or a bridal shower, or you know someone getting married, this is a perfect present for like the happy couple or the girl or the guy. I'm telling you, this is perfect. Right. So that, that's, that's really what we, you know, we, we wanted a book that was really for, and across the board, and you know, you know, it's written for all races and religions as well. It's not like it's, it's universal ideas and that anyone can really relate to. So love it. And where do we find it? It's on your website. Cause I just looked. In so order. yeah, you can get on the, our website, our website, not a partnership.com. You can follow us on Instagram at not a partnership, or you can just go to Amazon. Yep. Not a partnership and boom, there you'll find it right there. No problem. It's everywhere. And it's Definitely. in the show notes, everybody. You'll find it there too. And Dr. Lynn, I think you are. Can you come back another day and play with me? I love this. Sign me up. Here's I'm ready. So okay. Smart. No Facebook Live. I think we have to get you on Clubhouse because we'll do okay. a room there about this because I think you're fantastic. I think that everyone. Thank you so much. I love it. I just ordered mine today. I got on your website. I'm so happy. Um, I don't know why I don't have it already. That seems silly. I don't know why. Why didn't I send you one? I don't know because you're in Israel. I'm in Israel right okay. now. I love this. Okay. Do you know that I climbed Masada in um, flip flops? Are you serious? Yes, no one told me that day that I had to wish. I don't know. You know what? Oh my gosh. I was young. <laughs> I just the thing down. I didn't walk down. I was, just, I was exhausted. It's a long day for me. <laughs> Sounds like a long day. <laughs> anyway, you guys, this has been amazing. Okay, Not a Partnership is the name of this book. You must get it. Everyone, write it down. You took notes, I hope, on Dr. Lynn today. Hope you took notes. And um, of course, you know where to find me. It's easy, jenniferhervitz.com or Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or whatever. And get my books too if you feel like it. And this has been such a great, I just love this conversation. Thank you so much. Okay, keep up the amazing work. And again, thank you for being just a force of good. It's really uh, really awesome to see what you're doing and um, looking forward to, you know, us continuing to be in touch. I agree. I loved it. Thank you guys. And everybody go out and do something great today. I don't know. Do something fun. If you can get outside, I can't, I'm stuck in my house. I'm going to do yoga or something today, but (laughs) everyone have a wonderful day. This is doing relationships, right? I'm Jennifer Hurwitz and thank you so much, everybody. Peace, love, and so much truth. Bye guys.